gut health and heart palpitations, what the research says. First of all, I'm gonna assume that you've seen a cardiologist and your heart has been checked out and it has been deemed healthy. Yet, despite that, you suffer with heart palpitations, arrhythmias, tachycardia, even AFib. You also suffer with acid reflux, heartburn, bloat, gas, constipation, hiatal hernia, shortness of breath, or anxiety. You have those symptoms and you've seen a connection. You've noted a connection between them, yet when you ask your doctors about it, they say, no, there's no way those are connected. Well, I want you to know you're right. There is a connection. That's what this video is about. The good news is that treatment is natural. Now, I am not your doctor. I am not prescribing for you. These videos are informative and the goal is to have you lead a happier, healthier life. Now, all the research supporting this information is in the description. Enjoy the video. If you thought that your heart palpitations were somehow related to your stomach or your GI tract, meaning what your gastrointestinal tract is doing, you are quite right. Yet, you might have been very frustrated over some passage of time Maybe finding yourself going to the ER in the middle of the night because you're having heart palpitations and you're worried that you're having a heart attack, only to be told your heart is perfectly fine. Um, yet, as you live with this for longer and you know you have heartburn or you have uh, gas and bloating, you have constipation, you feel a lot of pressure in the area of your stomach you've got shortness of breath, sometimes you feel anxiety, and, and you, you know, it's your body. You've been living with it for a while and you really start to be suspicious that these heart palpitations you're finding, maybe elevated blood pressure even, really have this interrelationship. But when you speak to your cardiologist about it or you speak to your gastroenterologist about it, you're, you're looked at like you're crazy, um, or you're certainly given no validation to your suspicion. Um, there is a doctor by the name of um, Ludwig von Romheld, and uh, Mr. Dr. Romheld actually lived from 1871 to 1938, and he claimed quite right, and um, named after himself, uh, eponymously, uh, the Romeheld syndrome, where he described exactly what you and I were just talking about, which is that there is a relationship, the way he talked at a cluster of heart symptoms stimulated by gastrointestinal, meaning stomach colon changes, resulting in heart palpitations and slowing of the heart, uh, and then I'm, I'm going to describe to you why it actually starts with slowing of the heart and then the heart reacts to that. Um, but some of the symptoms associated with this syndrome is not just the heart palpitations, but the shortness of breath, fatigue, anxiety, tachycardia, where the heart's, you know, uh, beating very quickly. Um, anxiety, I think I said, cramping feeling in the muscle, feeling very tight around your diaphragm area, sleep disturbance, dizziness, or vertigo. So. If you have all of those symptoms or you have several of those symptoms, uh, I really want to explain to you what's going on. And uh, he also quite rightly talked about the fact that some of the causes were excess gas, constipation, um, sometimes gallbladder issues, and hiatal hernia. So he actually mentioned way back in the early 1900s um, hiatal hernia and this association with the heart. You'd be interested to know that the Romeheld syndrome is considered obsolete, and that is why your doctor was not trained on it, and that is why they look at you like you know you don't know what you're talking about when you're when you're trying to explain to your doc that doctor that you feel your heart issues are related to gastrointestinal imbalances. One, you're right, and two. Uh, it's, it's, it's sad that this syndrome, which was <laughs> very astutely um, put together and evaluated by Ludwig, uh, has now been considered obsolete. And I, and I think it's really the nature of the specialty of medicine, how we want to put, put every 
problem and symptom that a patient comes in with into a box, and that's what root cause medicine does the exact opposite. We, looked at, we look at the body as a whole and appreciate that there's really no um, organ or system of the human body that's not interrelating with every other organ and system of the human body. But the traditional medicine culture is, is very um, about you know a pill for every ill, as, as people like to say, or just putting you in this diagnostic box. And what's interesting about this Rome-Held syndrome is that they actually stated that when people are, you know, have this sort of constellation of symptoms, as soon as they deem that the heart is fine, then the next step is a psychiatric workup. So, okay, great. So they, <laughs> you have nothing wrong with your heart, which Dr. Rome-Held agreed that there's nothing actually wrong with the heart. Um, and now the next thing is telling you it's all, it's all in your head. You're making it all up, which is factually incorrect. So what we're really talking about is, is, is anatomy. And what happens is that as a result of fairly long-standing, we find uh, gastrointestinal symptoms. So maybe you had a lot of antibiotics as a child. Maybe you took acne medication. You had some time in your life maybe where you were on a lot of antibiotics or you didn't grow up with the best diet, you know, maybe gotten to high school, college age, and really didn't have the best diet, and um, whether you had constipation, diarrhea, you were diagnosed with IBS, uh, constipation is very common, but, but any sort of abnormality of bowel function is very common. And what happens is, and it's over the course of time, this doesn't come on suddenly, you get an imbalance of the good bacteria versus bad bacteria in your colon, it's called the microbiome. That creates inf inflammation, a lot of inflammatory organisms, and you get what's called increased intra-abdominal pressure. Uh, that builds. It can certainly affect gallbladder function, liver function, but also that pressure uh, gets to a point where what does it run into? On your left side, it runs into your stomach, just uh, under your rib cage, and on the right side is your liver. So your liver is a very solid organ. It's not compressible. Your stomach is, so that pressure compresses, compresses the stomach, and the contents of your stomach, which is acid, goes up your esophagus. Now what happens is then is uh, certainly you can get acid reflux, you can get heartburn, you're put on an antacid, but this pressure and inflammation in the gastrointestinal tract uh, starts to irritate the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is our longest cranial nerve. It, it actually is um, the esophagus, which connects your mouth to your stomach. Um, the vagus nerve is like a web going around the esophagus. It's quite fascinating. So any uh, pressure and, and inflammation in that area really distresses um, the vagus nerve. I want to make sure I describe this well. So this um, compression of the GI tract uh, irritates the vagus nerve, the vagus nerve then slows your heart. So it can slow the heart to the degree that um, the body worries that the heart's not going to beat again, right? So then, I mean, the human body is an amazing, amazing machine. So what happens is your autonomic, you can think of sort of an automaticity, automatic part of your nervous system, kicks in and says, uh-oh, heart, I don't know why you're beating so slow, but this is not good. And then what happens is it elevates the blood pressure a bit and you get this increased beating of the heart to, to counter this vagus irritation, okay? So the vagus nerve is all about calm and slow, which is great um, until it calms and slows too much. And then we come in with having to override it. And that's that problem if all of a sudden your heart is beating out of your chest, you're convinced you're having a heart attack off to the ER, you see? So um, then where does the anxiety come in? That, that rush of that nervous system also is, uh, get, pulls in the fight or flight aspect of your nervous system. So this is just a, you know, the fight or flight I tell patients is a lot like why do we have uh, smoke detectors, right? Because where there's smoke, there can be fire. So all of a sudden you're, you're awakened in the middle of the night, your smoke detector is going off, and this is to get you moving, right? Because something bad could be right around the corner. It's the same thing with the fight or flight nervous system. When, you, when your breathing rate really slows and your heart rate really slows, that nervous system kicks in and says, okay, wake up, get moving, something bad is happening here. So it's trying to protect you. 
it scares the bejesus out of you, but it's trying to protect you. So um, just, just in summary, I want you to know that this cardiogastric reflex, this Rome-held syndrome, which of course is obsolete because it doesn't, um, you know, did not hold up to true science, which is ridiculous because we see it constantly. This is very real, and if it's you, please know that certainly it's not in your head, and the fact that you don't actually have heart disease is great, but it makes the problem no less real, and we here at Root Cause know how to resolve this issue. It's not difficult. It doesn't take drugs or surgery, and uh, you deserve to feel great and, uh, you know, enjoy life, not be fatigued, not have terrible sleep, not be freaked out with anxiety and heart palpitations and all the other sim symptoms that go with it. I wrote a book called Hiatal Hernia Syndrome that was written uh, about 19, what is it, 2022, right? Right toward the end of COVID, 21-22. I wrote it during COVID. Um, so you can definitely look at that. Or if you want assistance, please reach out to us. That's why we're here. And I'll see you next time.